The hatch patterns that you apply to areas of a drawing are actually a special object called a hatch object. This drawing includes a layer called hatch. Like most objects, hatch patterns are typically created on the current layer, and they take on the current color, line type, and transparency. It is a good idea, however, to put hatch patterns on their own layer. That way, you can hide hatch patterns by turning off the hatch layer. But unlike most other types of objects, when you create a hatch object, you can also specify the layer on which the hatch object will be created. Therefore, you can create the hatch object on a layer other than the current layer. Make the zero layer the current layer. To add a hatch, on the home ribbon, in the draw panel, click the hatch tool. When you start the hatch command, the ribbon changes to the Hatch Creation Contextual Ribbon. The tools in this ribbon let you select the hatch pattern you want to apply, as well as control its color, background color, transparency, angle, and scale. Expand the Properties panel, and here, you can also specify the layer on which the hatch will be created. Create the hatch on the hatch layer. A hatch pattern can only be applied to a closed area. You can select the area to be hatched one of two ways, by picking points or by selecting objects. Picking points is initially the default method but whichever method you choose will become the default method the next time you use the hatch command. In the command window, and with dynamic input enabled at the cursor, you can see that the program is prompting you to pick an internal point. In the pattern panel, in the ribbon, you can see the pattern that will be applied. You can also use the controls in the other panels of the ribbon to change the color, angle, scale, transparency, and other settings. When you move the cursor into a closed area, the program immediately displays a preview of the hatch, so you can see what the hatch will look like. If you move the cursor outside the area, the preview disappears. If you click inside the area, the preview is added to the drawing, but you can still make changes. For example, you can click in the Scale field and type a new scale factor to adjust the scale at which the hatch will be applied. You can also choose a different hatch pattern. If you select the wrong area or object to hatch, you can use the Undo option to remove the hatch and then select a different object or click inside a different area you are still looking at a preview of the hatch. In the command window, you can see that the hatch command is still active and the hatch creation contextual ribbon is still visible. Once you are satisfied with what the hatch will look like, you can either click the close hatch creation button in the ribbon or just press enter. Do that again. Start the hatch command again and then move the cursor over the area you want to hatch. Notice that there are two intersecting circles. When you move the cursor over that area, the hatch preview displays just inside that area, even though it is formed by the two separate objects. Again, you can click inside that area, and then, if you are satisfied, either click the Close Hatch Creation button in the ribbon, or just press Enter to complete the command. The other way to select the area to be hatched is by selecting objects. Click the Hatch button again to display the Hatch Creation contextual ribbon. This time, in the Boundaries panel, click the Select button. 
Now, the program prompts you to select objects. When you move the cursor over an object, you no longer see a preview of the hatch. But now you can select objects using any object selection method. If you select the rectangle, you immediately see a preview of the hatch pattern that will be applied. Again, you can use the tools in the ribbon to change the hatch pattern, the scale at which it will be applied, and other settings. Also notice that the entire rectangle is filled with the hatch pattern. The program ignores the circle and hatches right through it because you did not select the circle. The program is also still prompting you to select objects. If you select the circle now, the hatch pattern no longer fills the circle. Again, when you are satisfied with the appearance of the hatch, you can simply press Enter or click the Close Hatch Creation button. Erase that hatch and repeat the process. Since the last method you used was to select objects, that has become the default selection method. In the ribbon, click Pick Points. Now the program is once again prompting you to pick an internal point. Move the cursor into the area inside the rectangle but outside the circle. And now the program automatically detects the circle inside the rectangle. When you use the Pick Points method, the program automatically detects closed areas, whereas when you use the Pick Objects method, the program can only determine the hatch boundaries from the objects you specifically select. When you are satisfied with the appearance of the hatch, you can complete the command by either clicking the Close Hatch Creation button or simply pressing the Enter key.